رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي خص بالبلاء من عباده الأسفياء وشرها صدورنا بمعرفة الأولياء ومحبة الأزكياء ثم الصلاة والسلام على البشير النذير والسراج المنير أبا القاسم المصطفى محمد صلى الله عليه Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is a great honor for me to be with you tonight. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower all of us in this great month of Rajab, Rajabul Asab. Asab means the month that it rains, the mercy of Allah rains, inshallah, to shower all of us with his mercy. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep all of you, especially our dear brother, Hujjatul Islam wal Muslimin, Jawah said, Hidar of Tab Razabi, who is not here. He invited us, but he is not here. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect him wherever he is, and inshallah to be in the best of tawfiq and health. In the dua that we recited, because I'm, I'm short for time, we just go to the heart of the topic, the time is against me. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Imam Ali alayhi salam, he takes our hand and to ascend us and to teach us how to, to speak to Allah. He says, and we learn from him to say, وَجْعَلْنِي مِنْ أَحْسَنِ عَبِيدَكَ نَسِيبًا إِنْدَكَ وَأَقْرَبِهِمْ مَنْزَلَةً مِنْكَ وَأَخَسِّهِمْ زُلْفَةً لَدَيْكَ after all the ups and downs in dua, Imam alayhi salam is saying, Oh Allah, I want to be the servant that has the most possible portion and bounty and boons with you. To summarize this three part of dua, Imam alayhi salam is about to say, Oh Allah, I want to be the one who has the maximum pleasure. I would like to be the one who has the maximum pleasure to be with you because you created us to enjoy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, إِلَّا مَا رَحِمَ رَبِّي وَلِذَا لَكَ خَلَقَهُمْ Allah created you to make you enjoy. Allah has created us to take pleasures. Why we choose religion, why we choose to be religious people, because we are looking for pleasure, we are looking for maximum pleasure. Those who do not believe in Allah, they also have pleasures. Yes, they have, but it's so small, it's minimal. We do not suffice with that. So when you choose religion, it is because you are so greedy for pleasures. You see, this is usually contrary to what religious people believe. People, they believe that Muslims should protect themselves from doing you know, evil things. So we protect ourselves, we, do, we have taqwa, we avoid pleasures, and those non-believers, they have pleasures. Then when we die, then in the other life we have pleasures. No. We, we choose religion. I'm not talking about the pleasures in the hereafter. That is something else. Here, even in dunya, Religious people have more pleasures to take than the non-religious people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran about shaitan. Allah says, he is your enemy. So he is your enemy, so you consider him as your enemy. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he, he, he struggles to take and put his hizb in the hellfire. Shaitan 
struggles to make his followers not to enjoy the life, not to take pleasures in the life. You know, this is the tactic of shaitan. When shaitan is about to take something from you, he offers you the very thing. This is how clever he works. In the story of Adam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted Adam and Eve to be in heaven forever. And shaitan wanted to put them out. So he just suggested, said, I will give you, I will show you something to be in Jannah forever. He suggested the very thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because of that, put Adam and Eve out of the heaven. He wanted to kick them out, but he suggested the very thing in order to take it from them. Allah says in Quran, shaitan is about to put his people and his followers in hardship. In other places, those who do not remember Allah, those who are not with Allah, they have a difficult life. When we look at the pleasures, the nature of pleasures even, I'm not speaking about spiritual pleasures, even the material pleasures that people enjoy. You know, we have some faculties inside. We take the faculty uh, pleasures, we think that it is our physical uh, senses that take the pleasure. As a matter of fact, these are instruments. What, in fact, helps us to enjoy the pleasures is our imagination, khiyal is the khiyal, what we call it imagination. This is where you come to realize pleasures. Imagine if, if you enjoy a specific food, you take a lot of pleasure out of a specific food. Now the food is ready, ready. you have spent a lot for it, it's ready, you want to eat, then the phone ring as somebody calls you, your son is in trouble. Your father passed away. Your imagination is hurt. You eat the food, no pleasure comes. The very food, the very tongue, taste, everything is there. But you don't enjoy it. Why? Because your imagination is hurt. So even though those pleasures that we take with these five senses that we have, the fragrance that we smell, the sins that we see, what we hear. All these pleasures, these are instruments that our physical body has, but the place that defines the pleasure is our imagination. So when imagination is developed, you get more pleasures. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, Ilahi sajada laka sawadi wa khiyali wa bayazi. Oh Allah, my darkness, my khiyal, and my white, all prostrate before you. Sawad means physical body. Khiyal is the, 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 the world, this faculty between what we call it nafs, between soul and between the body, the medium. And my ruh, my uh, bayazi means my ruh, all are at your service, at your control. The prophet, uh, thank you, was so that he could bring his imagination he, when he performs salat before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he enjoys. He gets the pleasure. For us, our imagination is wild, runs away. But he says, Sajada like a sabadi, wa khiyali, wa bayazi. So the pleasure that the Prophet takes out of Salat is not considerable, is not imaginable for any person in any material pleasure. Unfortunately, we don't teach religion this way. We don't teach our children this way. Why we should be religious people? If you do not follow the religion, you will be in hellfire. No. If you be religious, then you will enjoy the life more than others in this world and the hereafter. 
This feeling that you have, you, you, all of you, you have experienced when you cry for Imam al Hussein in the passion of Imam al Hussein, the feeling that you have, the pleasure that you take, what physical pleasure can give you that taste, that feeling? Nothing. Nothing in this dunya can give you the pleasure that when you are standing before the shrine of Imam al Hussein and crying for him. We have tasted all the material, physical pleasures. And these are also something that we can understand. Ayatollah Najabat, you know, one of the outstanding spiritual figures that we had in the recent century was Ayatollah Qazi Tabatabai Rahmatullah. He was the master of Allama Tabatabai Rahmatullah, Ayatollah Bahjad, and many outstanding figures. Ayatollah Najabat, one of his students, he says, once I, I, I saw, I went to Ayatollah Qazi's house, I saw him so upset. And I asked him, what's the matter? What's wrong? Now just imagine what makes us sorry. What are the mind occupations that we have in our life? Now compare it. This Ayatollah Ghazi said, something has occupied my mind for several days. What's that? I'm thinking if we die and in Jannah, they don't let us to pray, then what should we do there? What should we do there? What does he feel when he performs salat that I don't feel? What pleasure he takes that we cannot understand? Uh, this, this keep it in parentheses. To take the pleasure of being close to Allah is not easy to be understood by people. You need to have you know, added value to yourself. Physical pleasures, for example, music. Everybody understands the pleasure of music. Even they say if you, for example, play music for plants, they grow better. For cows, they give better milk. So when you take pleasure out of music, this is the animalistic pleasure. You don't need any added value to yourself to get the pleasure. But to, to take the pleasure of salad, you need much added value to yourself to understand it and that is why you have been created and that is the difference between you and the animals so the whole life is the management between the pains and the pleasures how to manage them how to purify your imagination I was saying this in parentheses that it is not easy for all people to understand the pleasure of being with Allah. We, we ordinary people, in some cases we have experienced this. Sometimes we were we, we in sort of hardship, then a mercy of Allah comes and solves the problem. In some cases we have tasted that kindness and mercy of Allah. But generally speaking, we don't. When the Prophet says to Bilal, Arihna ya Bilal, in the hardship of the war and the difficult moments of life, when the time, it's the time of Salat, Allah, the Prophet says to Bilal, Arihna ya Bilal, call for Salat, I want to get away from all the pains and all the hardships. What does he feel in Salat? It needs added value. Not all people can understand it, can enjoy it, but Loving a human being is not difficult. Loving a human being is not difficult because he's human like us. He has emotions like us. We can see him. We can put ourselves in his shoes. Then we can sort of accompany him. If we want to go to, to, to begin a spiritual journey, to begin it in a form of a man is easier. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to love the Prophet and his household. You know, when you come to love Imam al Hussein, this love of Imam al Hussein for you and me, we may not experience the love for Allah, but we can experience the love for Imam al Hussein. Then it's the beginning of tasting spiritual pleasures. When I'm talking about the spiritual pleasures, you know what I'm talking about because you love Imam al Hussein. You know, when we perform salat, we say, Qurbatan ilallah, to, to get close to Allah. So, what is getting close to Allah? We speak about it, but really in our heart, we are not impatient for it. 
In the du'a, you said, وَقَلْبِي بِحُبِّكَ مُتَيَّمَا Oh Allah, I want my heart to be impatient for you. But our heart is not like this, to be honest. We are not impatient to speak to Allah the way that we are impatient for a worldly loved one. But when you come to experience the spiritual pleasure with Imam al Hussein, with Imam al Rada, with the Prophet, with Lady Fatima, then you are beginning to learn the spiritual pleasures, to know that there are pleasures beyond these material pleasures. That's why this hadith has been mentioned in very authentic books of Shia and Sunni. That the Prophet once asked his companions, Ayyu oral iman awthaq? What is the strongest rope of iman? What is the strongest handle of faith? Sahaba said it's Salat. Somebody said Psalm. Somebody said Hajj. The Prophet said all of them are important, but none of them is the answer to my question. Then they said, what is Ya Rasulullah? The Prophet said, al hubbu fillah. To love for the sake of Allah. To love for the sake of Allah. This is the strongest rope that connects you to Allah. That's why in one verse the Prophet said, you know, I have struggled for you for 23 years. You know what is the reward of all the struggles I had? To love my household. One verse is in Surah Al-Shura, the other is in Surah Al-Furqan. In the other verse, the, the same Prophet says, the only reward I want from you is to take the path towards Allah. You know, apparently this is contradictory. If somebody works for you, and at the end he says, I don't want anything except money. I don't want anything except money. Then again, he comes to say, I don't want anything except to respect me. This is contradictory. When you said, I don't want anything except money, means I don't want anything except money. What about respect? No, I don't want, just the money. So when you come to say, I don't want anything except respect, this is contradictory to the first sentence. Because you excluded everything except this one. You want only this one, nothing beyond it. So when you bring two exclusions about something, this is contradiction. This is wrong. In one place, the Prophet says, I don't want anything except loving my household. Only this? Yes, only this. In another place, he says, I don't want anything except what? To take the path towards Allah. This is contradictory unless, unless they are the same. Unless both are the same thing. You see how Allah puts the truths in the verses put them together the prophet says i don't want from you anything except the love of ahlul bayt why because the only way that you can take towards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then in another says whatever i ask as a reward is for you it's not for me because this way you will get close to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you get close means you get pleasure of being close to Allah. How pleasing it is, we don't understand. It's beyond our imagination. You have to be like Imam Zain al Abidin to understand what is the pleasure of being close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Imam Zain al Abidin alayhi salam says, Ilahi astaghfiruka min kulli ladhatin bighayr zikrik. Oh Allah, I repent to you from any pleasure I took in anything except your name. While I experience the pleasure of your name, then it is so rude to call other things as pleasure. How can I compare that pleasure with these pleasures? So for Imam Zain al Abidin, it's a sin when he does istighfar when he repents he's not repenting from the sins that you and me we have he's repenting he says astaghfiruka min kulli ladhatin bighayr dhikrik so how high this imam is what is the position of imam they take the maximum pleasures in their life and we 
by religion we are looking for pleasures you know in philosophy they talk about the final goal of man they say saada happiness happiness is not anything beyond pleasures it's the eternal pleasures so everything revolves around pleasures do not be ashamed to say we are looking for pleasures why are you going to masjid because i'm looking for pleasures you said we may not utter it by your tongue but this is really what we are looking for even if you do not take pleasure in this ton in this dunya you believe that there are pleasures for you in the hereafter but the point is that if you want the pleasures there you have to take it here you have to take it here you have to bring it from dunya wanada ashab an-nar ashab al-jannah an afizu alayna min al-ma'i aw mimma razaqakum Allah people of hell will address people of jannah they say we are thirsty can you please offer us give us some of the water you drink us all the bounties you have is it possible can you do that what is the answer they say return to dunya you cannot take it here inna allah haramahuma ala al kafirin allah has made them this water is forbidden to kuffar it's forbidden to you why is this because allah is mean is this because allah is so like you, we small people just to want to take revenge then the heart is at peace no he is the creator inna allah haramahuma ala al kafirin because the nature of kuffar is in a sense that if we give them the water the water in their body will turn into fire your nature makes it as fire as you made it as fire in dunya quran says when the verses of allah recited to them they began mocking them reckoning them in dunya you were turning the water into fire as quran says in surah ar-ra'd anzalna min as-sama'i ma'an fasalat awdiyatun biqadarha mufassirin say in this verse that ma'an min as-sama the water which rained down to the earth this this water is quran the very verses were recited to them they turned it into fire and this will be manifested in that life So if you want to enjoy the pleasures there you have to be able to take the pleasure here when Allah talks about his friends what does he say ulaika lahumul amn they are at peace la khawfun alayhim wa la hum yahzanun they have no fear in dunya they don't get sad they don't get sad means what they are in constant pleasures they are in permanent happiness they are in permanent happiness they are so sophisticated that in the heart of the hardships they are happy we have heard this from lady zainab sallallahu alaiha when she said wa ma raitu illa jamila whatever it's it's the big catastrophe the greatest musiba might be for a human being that happens to lady zainab but she's so developed inside that can see the godly side of the event that takes place and it brings ease to the heart of lady zaina so when you are so sophisticated to take the pleasure in the heart of the hardships let the land to be in enjoy and in ease what are the maximum pleasures that people have in dunya the these those who are you know this is very important issue this is very important issue because usually people think as i said that those people they have pleasures and we don't have pleasures and unfortunately sometimes religious people sort of feel jealous of them you know they feel jealous of them that you know they have having many pleasures we don't have one of the reasons this extremist people 
easily, you know, attack and kill whether those who they, who they consider to be non-religious is because they feel jealous. This is because when you don't see your pleasures in what you're doing, and even if you practice religion without pleasures, it makes you arrogant. It makes you arrogant. You perform Salat, Salat, Layl, you are fasting the month of Rajab, then you are so demanding. As if everybody owes you, Allah owes you. Imagine when your family are at home and they are having a very simple food. You have, been, you have gone to a you know, very perfect, luxurious feast. You have eaten the best food. When you come home, how do you feel? You feel arrogant or you're ashamed, you're embarrassed that my family had a simple food. I, I, I ate the best foods. How do you feel? If you enjoy the uh, worship and the religion, then your heart aches for the non-religious people. When you see them, you feel pity for them. You like to help them. But when you don't take pleasure, you're arrogant. You think that you're better than them. Like a father who works in a very hard place, like in a mine, and family, family are at peace, he goes home demanding, you know, I'm taking so much trouble and you are at peace and you are enjoying. This is the case with many religious people. Because they don't enjoy. They don't enjoy it. And alhamdulillah, in the school of Ahlul Bayt, salam, we have so many things that we can experience these spiritual pleasures. This dua of Kumail, if you ponder upon it, dua of Abu Hamza al Somali, Munajat, Khamsa, Ashar, and so many perfect, you know, oceans of wisdom and spirituality that we can enjoy. So it is a vital importance to bear in mind that whatever we say, what is the purpose for being religion, whatever term you come, it's for Kamal, it's for perfection. So what, what is perfection? Why should I look for perfection? So if I'm perfect, so what is the difference between me and the others? You know, these are the terms we play with them. Qurbatan Allah to be close to Allah. So what is being close to Allah? We don't understand. But deep in all of them, it's looking for pleasures. And this is only this dunya. And you go, when you go there, the manifestation of the pleasures you had here in that realm of right life is not understandable for us. It's beyond our imagination. Muhammad ibn Muslim, he says, he's one of the companions of Imam al-Sadiq and Imam al-Baghir alayhi salam. He says, it was a long time I didn't see Imam al-Baghir alayhi salam. I went to Medina seeing him. He was a class. People were sitting, Imam was teaching. I was at the door seeing Imam. I couldn't control myself. I started crying loudly and sobbing. Imam noticed my crying and my voice kept silent. Then he noted to me, come, come close to me. And I sat beside Imam. He opened the place beside him and I sat beside Imam. And Imam alayhi salam said, you will not understand your position and your value unless when your soul comes up to here. It means the moment of death. When the veils are removed, then you will understand the value of this love that you have towards Ahlul Bayt. Those who are the true followers and lovers of Ahlul Bayt, you know, when they die, they, they have a kingdom. They are in that life, they have a kingdom. In this dunya, you may not consider them important people. This is one of the names of the Qiyamah, Aliyatun Safila. It will raise some people, it will fall some people. Aliyatun Safila. Some people in this 
dunya, nobody, you know, cared about them. But when they died, they have a majesty there. They have a kingdom there. As some people apparently are important, when they die, they get nothing. So, to be with the Halul Bayt alayhim salam they have taught us how to take these spiritual pleasures. And as I said, pleasures is by our imagination. And the perfect form of pleasure is lizzatul aql. The pleasures by the intellect. This is beyond these imaginary pleasures. Aql is the highest form of human being. According to our ahadith, Jannah, paradise, is the manifestation of aql, embodiment of aql. Few people understand the intellectual pleasures which are much higher than these spiritual and emotional pleasures. So, this is a vital importance to bear in mind that our religiosity, our being religious should be with pleasure. And we have to live in a way that people around us, they have to see this pleasure that we take. Of course, not for showing off, but I mean, it must be uh, realized in our lives. We really should enjoy the life. The pleasures that we could take from the life are real. Non-religious people, this is the difference between rizq and mal in Arabic. Sustenance and property havings. There might be many rich people, but the wealth that they have is not their sustenance, is not their rizq. I have seen and also you have seen lots of rich people, the bank account is full but they cannot enjoy it. They cannot enjoy it. So their sustenance is few. Rizq is few. I know a person, he has a very big garden, but he's so busy at the business, goes to the work 6 a.m. till la very uh, late at night, they work, they have a big business, and he has, uh, someone works for him in his garden. The garden is with this worker and the family. They live there. The pool is for them. The fruit is them, for them. Everything is for them. They enjoy it. And that guy even pays for the facilities and the other things. Only the document is for that rich people, person. But all the pleasures is that for this person who works. So the, the, the garden is his mal and this worker's sustenance. So some, many cases you have, for example, in Mafadi, you recite, this is, if you recite this dua, you will be receive this and that. So when you recite it, do not wait, for example, for some cash to come to you. You are about to get sick. The sickness, the disease will be removed, so you are in peace. This is a sustenance. Your child was about to, to be sick and for a week to make the life hell to you. It is removed. Now your life is in ease. This is a sustenance. You come to a majlis, you, re, you are reminded of the name of Allah, this is sustenance. You have a good friend, it's a sustenance. All these things, this is a sustenance that we have. So, we have to separate. And even when it comes to wealth and the, that materialistic pleasures, I said, we shouldn't be superficial, we shouldn't uh, judge them superficially. To be able, the capability to use the imagination to enjoy is very important. Sometimes a person, a child may enjoy a second-hand bicycle that the rich person with the best you know, brand cannot enjoy it. So the pleasures are inside. The material pleasures are relative to people. 
it, it, it depends on how your imagination feels and finds them. So in dunya, whatever pleasure which is for them, for the non-religious people also is also for us. But as I said, the, the whole life is the management for the pleasures. The, the country, this country is not a religious, it's not an Islamic country. But you see in this uh, time of the pandemic, they put ban on drinking. Why? Drinking might be some pleasure for them, but they know this is going to cause so many problems. A pleasure which has so many problems. So a wise person is going to manage the pleasures. Some pleasure which is going to be, give a feeling to me for some minutes then to cause so many problems, I don't want it. That's why if, if there was no these problems, Many people, maybe 90-90% of people could be addicted to you know, drugs. But why many people do not go towards them? They know there is not only the matter of pleasure. There are sufferings after that. So you manage the pleasures and the pains. This is the whole story of life. So for religious people, they take the physical, material pleasures, but they have management for the greatest pleasures. If you come to that level to understand the pleasure of name of Allah, then you come to this part of dua Imam Ali alayhi salam had وَجْأَلْنِي مَنْ أَحْسَنَ عَبِيدِكَ نَسِيبًا إِنْ ذَاكِ وَأَقْرَبِهِمْ مَنْزِلَةً مِنْكِ أَقْرَبِهِمْ The closest in position to you. We have the hadith that the greatest pleasure that someone may experience in Jannah is the pleasure of name of Allah. Remembering Allah. This is the maximum pleasure that a person may can achieve. وَرِزْوَانٌ مِنَ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرٍ Quran also ratifies this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give all of us the chance and tawfiq to be among those people who understand these realities and take these spiritual pleasures and to have the life in this spiritual sense and inshallah to shed this light to the life of ourselves and those around us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.